Okay, hello. So, if you're new to the channel, I use data science to answer questions that are mostly stupid, sometimes serious, and today's video, yet again, doesn't involve data science, really. I don't know if it's quarantine making us stir crazy and overinflating everything that happens on the internet, or if it's just the general insanity of people in the tech and VC space, but there's been this idea that's getting more and more popular of essentially owning stock in creators and influencers. The idea is sort of like Patreon, but if you give money to a creator, you have the opportunity to get a return on that investment as that creator's following goes up or down. And let me just say right out the gates, it's a bonkers idea and it has a lot of disturbing implications to it. But this idea was never realized. So for a long time, it felt sort of empty for me to criticize it. But now, as this video's title tells you, it actually exists. So let me tell you why I think this idea of a creator stock market is truly horrifying. So what happened here exactly? Enter BitCloud, a social media platform that also allows you to purchase creator coins. And just like the stock market, as more and more people purchase a creator's token, the price of that coin goes up. Ergo, the more popular a creator, the more their coin is worth. There's even a leaderboard showing whose coins are worth the most each week. And Elon Musk has been dominating pretty much since the website went live. Which is not surprising because the crypto community goes so hard for Elon Musk. And BitCloud, if I hadn't said it already, is a cryptocurrency in and of itself. So the way it works is you use Bitcoin to buy BitCloud, and then you use that BitCloud currency to buy creator coins. Needlessly complicated. It sounds ridiculous, but there's a bunch of people who are already on the platform and have their own creator coins. Pamela Anderson's on there and a ton of venture capital influencers, as you would expect, are on there like Chamath. And even Three Lao is on there, who you might recognize as the composer of Ninja's intro. And I'm now realizing I don't know how to pronounce his name, so apologies if I got it wrong, Mr. Lao. But there's a bunch of other famous people who are on the website, but their accounts aren't claimed yet. And that's because the developers behind the site scraped the 15,000 most popular Twitter profiles and made BitClout accounts for each of them on their website. Now, if you are a person who had one of those Twitter accounts, you can claim this account as yours and then you'll get that nice little blue tick mark indicating that it's yours and you're verified. And then you can actually start profiting off of your own coin. Otherwise, it's got this like clock emoji thing saying that it's like waiting to be claimed. Theoretically, everyone who signs up for a profile on BitClout has their own creator coin and are able to buy and sell it on the market. But it doesn't look like anyone outside of those 15,000 initial accounts are able to actually issue their creator coins out to anyone. So like I said before, BitClout is not only a currency, but it's also a social media platform that looks very much like Twitter. And the idea driving this platform is that you make posts not only to increase your following and your social status, but also to increase the cost of your coin. This isn't just a social network, it's a social economy. Now, I'm sure the pieces are starting to come together for you, but before I explain why I so strongly dislike this concept, I think it's important to go over some of the pros that people bring up when they're talking about BitClout. So one of the obvious pros, for influencers at least, is that with BitClout, they can profit off of their own reputation, which removes the need for sponsorship and ad reads. Like in this system where an influencer can make money whenever someone buys their token, you're less incentivized to make deceptive posts promoting the latest flat tummy tea or literal gambling to your impressionable audience. Maybe this could see a reduction in the highly edited, highly manipulative posts that is so common from influencers and content creators. However, that pro is really only limited to the bit clout platform itself, right? Nothing that's happening on BitCloud is going to affect what happens on Instagram or Twitter or Reddit or anywhere else. So yeah, that's it. That's really the only pro that isn't a whole lot of nonsense. So let's just get to the cons. Number one, this platform seems hella scammy. So to be on the BitCloud platform, you obviously have to put in money, which is okay. It's a transactional site. Obviously, that's going to be the first step. But 
there's no withdraw option. <laughs> like the whole idea of BitClout is to like make an investment and watch that investment turn a profit for you. But that doesn't mean anything if the price goes up and you can't actually withdraw those funds and liquidate it into like cash. The crazy thing about this is the price of the BitClout currency itself fluctuates wildly, even without anyone being able to liquidate their BitClout. And that's because they have this nested transactional system where you use Bitcoin to buy BitClout and BitClout to buy the creator coins. Every time you buy a creator coin, you're essentially selling your BitClout, which is what's causing the price of the BitClout to actually go up and down without it ever leaving the website and the developers' pockets. That's pretty shady. That problem of not being able to withdraw your funds will likely get fixed because BitClout is backed by some of the biggest names in the venture capital space. And it's not likely that these firms would be pouring millions of dollars into a literal Ponzi scheme. Well, it wouldn't be the first time it happened. So I guess time will tell. On top of that, you need to put a minimum amount of money into BitClout in order to transact on the site. And that minimum amount fluctuates with the price of BitClout itself. So one day to sign up, you might need to put in the equivalent of 20 US dollars. The next day it would be $40. The next day it might be $120. And it's not always clear what the minimum amount is when you're signing up. And I've seen people complaining that they sent money that was less than the minimum amount and they're not able to do anything on the website. They can't buy or sell anything. And they also can't withdraw the money that they've just put into the site. It's just frozen there and it's in the developer's pocket. Again, it could either be just another bug you see in an early stage project or indicative of some really shady shit happening. Number two, the creators of BitClout made those 15,000 initial accounts without the permission of those people. Essentially stealing the likeness of those 15,000 people and using that association to promote their own platform. And this is the point that has formed the bulk of the public backlash against BitClout because a number of people have actually threatened lawsuits over this and demand to have their names and faces taken down from the site. I will be honest, when I first read these complaints, I was like, calm down. You wouldn't sue Famous Birthdays or Muckrack or Wikipedia for using your likeness. And BitClout makes it very clear who is verified, i.e. who has claimed their account and who is active on the platform and who isn't. But then I realized that the founders of BitClout are anonymous. <laughs> you cannot say that you are open source and then not even say who you are. What the f- I feel like I'm going insane. That is like the bare minimum transparency that is expected of open source projects. On that point, they say they're open source, but I can't find their source code anywhere. And their product isn't even free. Like what even? And then there's also this idea of market manipulation, right? These founders presumably are not influencers. They're not big names, but by virtue of their association with the platform, their creator coins are among the highest value on the website. As I'm recording this, the elusive Diamond Hands, who apparently founded BitClout, has the ninth most valuable coin on the website. And no one even knows who this motherfucker is. Like, ah, like is this not market manipulation? <laughs> that, to me, makes it feel like it's a scam more than anything else. These guys might have just created this just so they can cash out for themselves. Nah, I don't know. Plus, I've seen at least one instance of impersonation on the platform where someone wrongly claimed a creator's account. And that's really sticky because there's actual currency involved that's being claimed for pretending to be someone that you're not. Like this isn't your average case of internet impersonation. The third issue I have with this is longevity. The people who are saying that BitClout is going to be the next big thing are using this circular logic of like, well, it's got big investors backing it and everyone's talking about it, so it's gotta last. Yeah, that's the definition of a bubble. Like the only increase in value that these creator coins are experiencing appears to be coming from new members joining the platform. You're also encouraged to hold on to your coins for as long as possible and wait for the value to go up. And as of right now, 
people are forced to hold on to their coins because they can't withdraw shit. It all sounds very much like a Ponzi scheme where the people who got in early are gonna cash out big time and everyone else who follows are getting scammed. And I can already hear you typing, you can say that about any cryptocurrency. And you said it, not me. This BitClout thing sounds exactly the same as another experiment that was tried in the UK called Football Index which allowed its users to buy shares in football or soccer players in the United Kingdom. What happened there is that the platform became completely reliant on new members joining in order to be able to pay out the old members who were beginning to leave the platform. So again, the only people who were able to make money are the people who joined in really early on. And if you're thinking, that sounds like an MLM, you'd be right. And if you're thinking, that also sounds a lot like BitClout. You would be doubly right. Number four, the value proposition here is nothing. So Pandora's box has already been opened when it comes to monetizing content on the internet. We can't put that genie back in the bottle. Beneath every viral tweet, there's someone promoting those stupid galaxy lights or even Bitcoin scams. Every op-ed writer now has a paid sub stack that you've got to contribute to to support them. And hey, you're watching this video on YouTube, so I'm sure you know what's up with sponsored content and brand deals. Paid content and social media are like this. You can't take them apart now. There's a lot of reasons we use social media to be entertained, to be informed, to connect with other 20-somethings who can't stop watching the Carmen Sandiego show on Netflix. But you cannot convince me that any of us use social media explicitly to buy stuff and to be advertised and marketed to. There is no one on this planet that excitedly waits for sponsored segments of video. There is no one on this planet that follows people on Twitter exclusively to read their clever ads. And no one is jumping up in excitement when an ad interrupts their endless scrolling on the For You page on TikTok. Integrating markets and social media like this in such an explicit way like BitClout is doing sounds like a dream come true for influencers and for people who want to make money off of this stuff, but sounds like an absolute hellscape for anyone else. Those of us who just want to enjoy their time online. <laughs> It's great if you want to monetize your content, but it's horrible for your followers. This does not improve the experience for anyone. Anyone! And also, the creators who are on this platform are the worst. That's mean. But we all know that the people who get extremely popular online are people who make content for kids. And this content is always like way too loud, way too colorful, just generally obnoxious and superficial. And not to say that that content reflects on the creator themselves because it doesn't, but I do not want to see more of Logan Paul or Addison Rae or any of these other people. If you are the type of person who is interested in cryptocurrency and like has disposable income, I'm gonna guess that you are over the age of 20, in which case you should not really be caring about these people either. Like, ah, I know they're important. I know they control a big chunk of the digital landscape, but like, why, why, why? Like so many things are wrong with it, you know? Like these are not, the people who need more clout. These are not the people who need more of a platform because their audience are already glued to the screen. They don't need anything else. Who is this for? And number five, I saved the most obvious criticism for the last, which is that monetizing a personality is fucked. I know we're approaching there with a lot of what's happening on YouTube, Instagram, etc. but BitClout isn't monetizing content like all those other platforms. It's monetizing the person themselves. It's not like it's the only platform that's doing that. I would argue like Twitch, which encourages its streamers to live stream more than 50% of their day, is monetizing their personhood and their life. Okay, so um, I just heard about this app called New New, which describes itself as a human stock market and allows its users to pay people and then be able to vote and determine the decisions that that person makes in their day-to-day -day life. So it could be something as simple as voting on what clothes they should wear for that day or who they should hang out with, or maybe even something more sinister. Pretty obviously terrible and dystopian. Um, and I just, I want off this ride. But this creator coin thing is like the most explicit version 
that I've ever seen. It's very Black Mirror-esque, where you suddenly have to guard your reputation, not only for like social clout and for your following, but also like potentially your life savings and your bank account. I know that the creators who are on this platform and who have creator coins like are not at risk of financial instability, <laughs> like these people are hundred millionaires, but this is only like the first iteration of this and like who knows what BitClout is going to look like in a year or two. I hope it looks defunct, I hope the website is down and no one gives it a second thought, but maybe you have a version of micro-influencers on BitClout who are throwing their income into this platform trying to make themselves big on something that is like designed to hurt them. As a certain bearded guy once said, capitalism turns everything into commodities, including people and their interactions with one another. And that man had no way of knowing how true that statement would end up being. But yeah, that's it for this video. What do you think of this whole BitClout mess? Have you heard of it before this video? And if you have, what do you think of it? It's surprisingly more polarizing than I thought it would be. I thought everyone would be like, what the fuck is this shit? This is insane. But everyone bows down to whatever the VC firms think. So everyone's just running with it because I guess it has legitimacy now. Maybe that's because people are only really talking about it for now and like, crypto spaces and tech spaces and like on clubhouse god forbid that place is a trash heap as soon as this breaks into the mainstream and people start getting more aware of it i'm sure more people will be clowning on it which i'm here for i'm so ready for that if you enjoyed this video please give it a like it does help a lot subscribe maybe even hit that bell if you're feeling that i would appreciate anything that you do yeah follow me on twitter at bostava underscore <laughs> My emotions are high right now. I don't know how I came across in this video. If I was yelling, I feel like I might've been. If I was, sorry. I just read the last Attack on Titan chapter and it wasn't great and I'm upset. So <laughs> that's not the only reason, but I think that's the main reason why I'm like so heated right now. Uh, so I'm just gonna take a break, drink a nice glass of kombucha and I will catch you all in the next one. Cool? Cool. Bye.